Hello everyone, and thank you for joining me. In this video, I'm going to look at how to use the new SageMaker Studio Lab and use a GitHub repo as our starting project. Now once you get logged into your Studio Lab, you're going to be presented with a screen that looks like this. One thing I wanted to point out that wasn't immediately obvious to me was that underneath the My Project section, I wanted to point out that right now you only get one project. And in that one project, you get 15 gig of disk space, 16 gig of RAM. And so think of it like having an integrated development environment that can only ever look at one folder. So you can bring code into that one folder. And while you're in the IDE, you can work on that code. But if you need to bring in another project, you'd probably have to take that code out, push it up to GitHub, for example, and then bring another project down to work on it. So that is sort of the mental model that I use. I think of it as an IDE that's restricted to a directory where I only get 15 gig of space in that directory, and I only have 16 gig of RAM. And if I ever want to bring in another project, I have to kick one out and bring one down. So it's not like you're going to have multiple projects listed here. So having said that, even though it seems like a big limitation, um, it's still a, a free service that offers a CPU and a GPU. So I'm still really excited to use it. I just wanted to make sure it's clear. You only get one of these projects. And if you have more questions, you can go down to the bottom where it says FAQ and it'll answer a bunch of other questions that you might have. And if I go down to project and compute, this is where I found the information out. So how many Amazon SageMaker Studio Lab projects can I have? One project, 15 gig of storage, along with the C, uh, either a CPU or a GPU runtime, 15 gig of persistent and 16 gig of RAM. So having said that, let's go back and let's uh, go through the example. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do when you get here is decide whether you want a CPU or a GPU. Uh, and unless you're going to be doing something um, with some computer vision, you're probably, a CPU is probably just fine. So we're going to go ahead and click the start runtime. And this is spinning up an environment, so it's probably going to take a little while. I'll pause the video here, and when it's all done, I'll come back. Okay, so that's completed. It's now telling me, because I've selected CPU, I have 12 hours in this session. Now, if by some chance I'm still working 12 hours later and it spins down, a couple things. One is all your work is saved, so you won't lose anything. And if you really do want to work more than 12 hours, all you have to do is start the project uh, environment again, and you just pick up right where you left off. And if it's a GPU, you get four hours, so it will end on you after four hours. But you just restart it and, and go again. Since it is a free environment, they are trying to limit uh, without keeping it running forever. So once you uh, have started the environment, just go ahead and select the open project. And that will bring you to a Jupyter Lab environment. And depending on if this is your first time or if you've been in and out of this a couple times, this view might change, but it'll look something like this. You would probably have the getting started notebook showing. So just to set your expectations, what this video is not going to be is an exhaustive tutorial on how to use the SageMaker Studio Lab user interface and what, what all the different options are. Instead, what I'm going to show you is how we can use SageMaker Studio Lab to clone a Git repo, set up a new environment for that Git repo, and then run through a notebook and run through some command line um, options. So I feel like I'm picking up where many of the introductory tutorials left off. Okay, so let's go ahead and get the Git repo. So I don't need the starter, uh, and uh, I, we can leave the launcher. So the Git repo that I'm going to pull is, is one of mine own. It's, uh, well, I call it the autoencoder driving data. Uh, and it's one that does uh, driving simulation. And we use machine learning to teach a simulated 8-bit car to drive on a simulated 8-bit road. All right, so what we're going to need is the actual Git URL. So I'll go ahead and get that. Then I'm going to come back to the Studio Lab and under the Git menu, I'm going to say, I'm going to ask it to clone a Git repository. I select that, go ahead and paste that URL in. Uh, it's, I'm fine to put it in the SageMaker Studio Lab notebooks folder or directory, which is where we are at right now. If I wanted to put it up a level, I could do that too. Uh, and I don't want, 
it's going to search for a file called environment.yaml. And if it finds one with that name, it will automatically build the Conda environment. So if you're a little bit like me, I don't typically use Conda. I, I always install using pip so I have complete control over the entire environment. But if you're coming into Studio Lab, this is built around a Conda environment. So the git repo that I have doesn't actually have an environment.yaml file. We do have a Conda environment file, but I didn't call it that for a very specific reason for this because I didn't want it to run it. But if you don't want it to run it, you just want it to pull that down, go ahead and make sure you uncheck, uncheck that particular uh, selection. And then go ahead and say clone. And that will go out and clone the, the uh, git repo and pull it down. And so this we have this here um, from the git repo. Now, as I said, I, I do have an environment file set up. And let's take a look at it. It's called ml underscore driving underscore env dot yaml. And this environment YAML file set up such that I'm going to name my environment ML driving. And the dependencies I have are Python 3.9 and pip. And I'm telling it to do a pip install as opposed to a conda install. And the libraries I'm interested in are sklearn, tensorflow, pandas, matplotlib. And very importantly, if you want to run a notebook and select this environment as a kernel, you need to install IPY kernel. If you do these things, then you'll see in just a second when we start up the notebook, we can select the environment that was set up for this. So now to set up our environment here, we can then right click on that YAML file and go to the build conda environment. So go ahead and select that. And it's going to ask you if you want to confirm, make sure you want to do this. And I do. And this will go through and use that environment file, this environment file right here, to create an environment called ML driving and pip install all of the pip libraries, sklearn, tensorflow, pandas, matplotlib, and IPY kernel. And that will take a few minutes, as you can imagine, depending on what you're installing. So I will pause the video here and I'll be right back. All right, so that is finally completed. So let's first, let me just show you, if we wanted to go to a terminal window and activate this environment, which we are going to do in just a second, we need to go to the launcher. And by the way, if launcher isn't there, let's, let's just close it. By the way, if you don't have launcher, you can go into the file menu and say either new launcher, or if you just need a terminal window, which is what we're interested in, you could say file new terminal. Now notice that the, the Python virtual environment is the default one, the studio lab one, but that's really not the one we're, we want to use. Instead, if we go to conda and we can take a look at the environments that it has. Ah, you can see now it has ML driving. And I just wanted to show you that that's where it gets put inside the .conda ENVs directory. Let's go back to the home directory. So now if you wanted to activate this Python virtual environment, we can type conda activate ML driving. And now that becomes the Python virtual environment. All right, but first let's open up our notebook. We go to the overview notebook, IPYMB, and well, you just double click it. And the first thing it asks us to do is select a kernel. So I've seen it sometimes ask and sometimes not. Um, by default, it will pick the default Python, which is the at Studio Lab environment. But because we created our own Conda environment and we included the install of the IPY, this now becomes a kernel that we can select our notebook then will run in the environment that we just created. That's why it was important to include that. So we'll go ahead and select it. And when I say include that, let me just show you. It's the IPY kernel install. That's what allows us to do this. All right, so once we have this, let's just make sure. If we do bang, which Python, that should be coming out of the, out of the and shift, uh, enter, will run that cell. That should be coming out of our ML driving Python file. And it is. Right. All right. So let's continue on. So again, the goal is not necessarily to teach you all about machine learning in this video, but really how we can interact with the Studio Lab environment. So I'm going to go fairly quickly through this particular example. So in this example, what we're doing is we are using an 8-bit driving scenario where we're going to collect some sample driving and then train a machine learning model to drive on its own. And the the bottom cursor, the, the red and the yellow, that represents your simulated 8-bit car. 
and the rest is the simulated 8-bit road. And the goal is, while we train it, we'll use our arrow keys to decide when we're going to go straight, left or right, and we're going to use that training data to train a machine learning model, and then we're going to let the machine learning model drive on a random road. Uh, we have a notebook that sort of summarizes all this, but to collect the data, we go into our terminals. And I don't want this one because this one has a Studio Lab uh, environment. The one I want is one with the ML driving. All right, let's take a look at where we're at. We've got, uh, we're, oh, okay, we've got to go into the SageMaker Studio Notebooks. And the name of the repo was Auto Encoder Driving Data. So let's CD into there. And inside of here, we have some scripts we're going to run. The first one is the 01 Collect Training Data. And because we are, we've set up our virtual environment through the Conda uh, YAML file, we can then type Python 01 Collect Training Data. And what this is going to do is bring up that simulated road and let me drive the car with the arrow keys. And while I'm doing this, I'll fast forward through all the training data so you don't have to watch me drive the car. It collects 150 samples to do the training on. And as I am typing left or right, it's showing you what I have selected. Okay, I have uh, collected all of my training data and that goes into a file called training.csv. Now, I have another uh, script, which is uh, O2 model training. And what that's going to do is it's going to run through, it's going to take the training data and run through a number of different possible uh, machine learning models, and it'll pick the best one. So we go through, we go, we look at a decision tree, uh, K nearest neighbors and a random forest. And it looks like the K nearest neighbors was the best one at 78% accuracy. Not great accuracy. And because I'm collecting different training data every time I run this, it varies depending on whether it's the decision tree or the random forest that becomes the best model. Okay, so now that I, I have a model trained, I can uh, now try to drive using that particular model. So now I'm going to type, uh, let me just show you the script. It's O3 drive by model. So I type Python O3. Now we're driving by the model. I'm not going to be using my hands. We're going to use a random road. And this is the machine learning model deciding what to do based on the road configuration from the data that we collected from the very first script. And you can see I didn't do a great job of driving. Uh, so it's sometimes I'm on the shoulder and it looked like I went off there once, but it recovered. So that's good. Yeah, so it looks like it's doing okay. 78% is not great. So that one did pretty well. It was able to use the machine learning model that we trained on the data that we collected to stay on the road. All right, so now let's go through the notebook really quick. We're going to import pandas numpy and matplotlib. Let's take a look at what that training data actually looks like. So it has 250 features, if you will. It's a 10... Uh, 10 pixel by 25 pixel driving picture. So this is uh, 10 by 25. And the, this column zero is the left, right, uh, or straight uh, target value. So the, the zero column is your target value. And if I just randomly look at some roads, so uh, let let's just look at random sample 66. Let's see what that one looks like. All right, so if I just take that sample out of my training data, reformat it so it looks like the road, zero is off-road, one is the shoulder, and two represents the actual road. And if I draw a picture of what that looks like, this is what it would look like. And if my car is at the bottom, the right answer would be it should turn to our left. So now let's just take one of the, one, one model. We're not gonna try to do a, an exhaustive search of the best models. We'll just do K nearest neighbors and we do cross val score, set up our XY data, look at our shape. So now we have 150 rows by 250 columns and 150 target values. Let's set up our K nearest neighbors and we're gonna set the number of neighbors as two and we're gonna have the weight be distance based. And then we'll just do a cross val score. So that's not too good. 64% uh, on the cross fail score. Um, and the reason the other one was better was because we actually do a grid search, picking different hyperparameters to find the actual best model.
All right, so now let me show you how you clean up because remember you only get this space and that's all you have. So we'll go ahead and close this. We don't need it anymore. Don't need this one. Let's, let's um, go back to the terminal window. So let's first deactivate the environment. So it's Conda deactivate. And now you can see we're back to our Studio Lab. And now let's get rid of this uh, environment because these virtual environments, they persist. If I were to leave or shut down this project and come back, I still would have this particular virtual environment to use again. But let's say we know we don't need it anymore. We really do want to get rid of it. So we want to do a conda remove dash dash name, and I call this ML driving all. So that's going to remove that entire environment. So it doesn't count towards our disk space quota. So if I go now to dot conda and ENVs, you'll see the ML driving is no longer there. So that environment's been cleaned up. And then as far as the notebook goes, since I ha haven't changed anything, I don't need to post or push anything back up, uh, I'm, I can go ahead and get rid of this particular directory. I'm done with it. And I just go ahead and delete it. And now you should be back to what you started with. So I created a brand new environment. I installed only the libraries in that environment that I wanted, ran my particular Git repo of code, and then removed that environment and removed the code. So I should be back to my baseline quota. So that's a real quick uh, how you use the uh, Amazon SageMaker Studio Lab if you wanted to pull down a particular Git repo and set up a specific environment for it. Thanks for watching.